David Tennant is one of the most well-known and beloved Time Lords to ever cross our screens on Doctor Who, often topping or nearing audience polls and rankings. His three seasons received much praise and are often the most talked about episodes of New Who. With Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials just around the corner, which will see him taking on the role of a 14th Doctor and reconnecting with his former companion, Donna Noble, he will also be facing off against the Toymaker, played by Neil Patrick Harris, and teaming up with Unit under the command of Kate Stewart. Now is the perfect time to rank the best 10th Doctor episodes. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Tidus Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. In at number 10, The Unicorn and the Wasp. After an episode that goes under the radar, this series for story goes for a whodunit murder mystery. The Doctor and Donna meet the famous Agatha Christie and have to solve the murders which a giant wasp is causing. The witty and hilarious interaction between the Doctor and Donna are in full swing here, and it offers some of the funniest scenes in the series. The actress who plays Christie, Fenella Wolgar, gives an utterly perfect performance of the writer and fits in smoothly with the dynamic between the Doctor and Donna. The episode keeps us guessing until the end, with a splendid payoff. In number 9, arguably one of my personal favourites, The Waters of Mars. In this autumn special, the Doctor arrives on a base on Mars, where the whole crew are due to die very soon. What causes their deaths is soon revealed in a chilling number of scenes. We find out that the water supply to the base has a virus living inside, which turns the crew into the Flood, which is basically looking to turn the whole crew on board into the same thing, water zombies. The unsettling feeling of the water can be turned against you makes it unsettling of some key decisions which do have devastating consequences for the crew on board. The guest star, Lindsay Duncan, plays the role tremendously here. She shows her scope by forming a strong and believable relationship with the Doctor, despite not having much screen time together. Tennant's performance shines as we feel sad that his time is ending. The episode marks what some refer to as the downfall of Ten, also called the Time Lord Victoria's storyline. That's who I am. The Time Lord Victorious. And there's no one to stop you. No. In number 8, The Girl in the Fireplace. The Girl in the Fireplace is an iconic episode of Series 2. At a time when David Tennant started to feel like the Doctor, in an episode very early into Tennant's tenure, the Doctor, Rose and Mickey, the great TARDIS team, land on a spaceship from the 51st century linked up with an 18th century France. It is run by a pair of androids, and they basically stalk Madame de Pompadour. It's a nice romantic story for Madame de Pompadour and the Doctor, which feels natural and not pushed. With the Doctor and Rose's own love story in the early days, this fits in well for some time. Despite Rose and Mickey being on the side for a lot of the episodes, we get some good moments between Rose and Mickey while they're on the spaceship, and it does have a sad but appropriate ending to the story. In number 7, of course we've got to talk about Utopia, The Sound of the Drums, and Last of the Time Lords. This final is often under-talked about, but offers much of what we want Doctor Who to be in a final. There are massive revelations, great types of story arcs, and someone challenging the Doctor. The biggest talking point from this final is the spectacular return of the Master, played by the veteran actor, Derek Jacobi. Despite not having him for long as the actual Master, he does play it sublimely. Showing the anger, smugness and evil within him, and the rest of the final does not disappoint. The new and very popular master, played by John Sim, shows a younger, funnier and more energetic side to the villain while still being menacing. With the master returning, this gives more time to focus on the Doctor's home planet, Gallifrey, which the master also comes from. This is explained well and gives us more of a backstory for the Doctor, which adds to his character. Martha Jones and of course Captain Jack Harkness are great alongside the Doctor and make for a unique TARDIS team. They all bring their own spin to the story and integrate with each other very, very well. Also, a little shout out to the ending where Jack reveals he is the face of Bo, which was confirmed by showrunner Russell T Davies. No one was expecting that to be said. In at number 6, The Impossible Planet and The Satan Pit. By the way, in case it's not obvious, we are combining two parts or three part episodes into one as it technically counts as one episode, almost. This mid-season two parter was the first time the Doctor and Rose were actually in danger, to a degree, that's subjective really, coming face to face with the true devil. This is such a cold, dark, and brilliantly put together two-parter. The relationship between Ten and Rose really blossoms here as we see their commitment to each other as friends at the darkest of times. This also introduces the Ood, who are partially villains but also being controlled by the devil, so we can cut them some slack. The crew on board are very well cast. 
One of the crew possessed by the devil, who's played by Will Thorpe, plays off a truly despicable villain in human form. The biblical and scientific facts and references made this a very balanced and interesting episode. Introducing the devil as a villain offers the edge of a seat story, as we never know how far the devil will go to get what it wants. But we do know the answer is not good for anyone involved. At our halfway point for number 5, The End of Time. Some stories are sad, maybe even bringing a tear to an eye, but this full on have a nation crying bucket, as we saw the end of David Tennant as the 10th Doctor. Now, while the Doctor may not have been at that forefront of every entry on this list, David Tennant gives an outstanding final performance. But we know it's not the final one. The story is much about him. I think hands down this is easily one of the best 10th Doctor episodes around and why it takes a spot at number 5. Once again, this also sees the return of the Master, still played by John Sim. And yet again, they play off each other perfectly. The Master is trying to take over the world, and what is no better way to do it than cloning himself onto everybody else. This is a great final story for Tennant to solve and make himself a true hero by saving planet Earth for the last time, but in spectacular fashion. We've also got to talk about Timothy Dalton playing Rosilion, now that was fantastic. Having Wilford Mott played by the late great Bernard Cribbins as the Doctor's companion is a stroke of genius. We knew they were close, but only got it in a short burst throughout the run. Having them together for the whole two specials signified their relationship with one another. It's so different, yet works, and the journey they both go on feels like a fitting end for the pair. When Tennant says goodbye to many of his companions and close friends, which is heartbreaking, we get arguably the biggest regeneration in Doctor Who's history, as we see the Doctor's TARDIS getting destroyed and set alight. Of course, we can't forget his final words. I don't want to go. Okay, now I've emotionally recovered from my ending there. In at number 4, Turn Left, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. Technically a three-parter, but also a two-parter. While this was not Tennant's official final, it was the end for several of the companions and Doctor's friends and very well wrapped up this sort of era of Doctor Who in a final. The importance of the companions cannot be talked about enough, as Donna's half-time lord, half-human brain almost single-handedly defeated the Daleks, for a while, hence the companions' exit feels well done and accomplished. The main theme from this final is the Daleks trying to take over the universe, wiping out any planets in its way. While not technically a three-parter, these three episodes fit together nicely. Other little stories are being wrapped up, including the whole mystery of Bad Wolf, which has been mentioned in Doctor Who since Season 1, and we already knew what it was. Also we explore a world where the Doctor is killed in a parallel world, and we see all the chaos he fixed being undone, which is a great twist in turn left. Of course, the mighty return of Rose Tyler helped get Donna back to the Doctor to stop the Daleks. All the extra little scenes with other characters, for example Captain Jack, Sarah Jane, and even Harriet Jones squeeze in so well. They're there for a reason, and all have their part in bringing down the Daleks. The dynamic between all of them is so great and works so well, even having the Torch team there. Credit to Russell T Davies for bringing so many characters into one story and not leaving any out. Hell, we even had Luke Smith there. Tenant was amazing as per, or should I say both tenants, because we're talking about the Meta Crisis Doctor. The ending for Rose is perfect, and even though Donna has a sad ending, she ends on a high. Shout out to Mary Gold, who needs to be complimented for every entry, especially this story. The music used is beautiful, fitting, and close to perfect. It amplifies everything going on in the story and deserves much, much praise. Don't blink. Blink and you're dead. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. And don't blink. Good luck. In number three, it's the episode Blink, but definitely made me hide behind the sofa as a child. Time for a story that's more wibbly wobbly than any other story in Doctor Who at this point in time. This could be potentially number one, but because of the lack of a Doctor we get in it, it does land in number three. Which is still a very respectful place. With the Doctor being zapped back to 1969, we are given a present day story about a girl called Sally Sparrow. She investigates a creepy house, but soon finds out it's not the house that's the creepy part. The introduction of the Weeping Angels is massive, being used multiple times in other seasons going forward. But this is their first appearance, and it still holds up today as the most remembered episode from the villains. Arguably, it's the most talked about and viewed episode of New Who, which makes it so popular in the Angel's ability and how clever that fits in with the story. Sally Sparrow, played by the fantastic Carrie Mulligan, the main character from the episode, does a great job and we instantly fall in love with her. Her intentions, her character, and her actions are all very understood. As a character taking over for the Doctor for a whole episode, you might have the same interest, and she performed it to show and prove it. 
reaction from Blink today is still massively positive and probably will not change. At the end of the episode, the message leaves it in an eerie note, but you should keep an eye on every statue, because if you blink, you are dead. And what's that one advice the Doctor gives us at the end? Good luck. Great, very helpful. This watch, Martha, this watch is... In number two, Human Nature and the Family of Blood. This two part is where Martha gets her moment and shines. In this episode, the Doctor, or should I say John Smith, has to hide his Time Lord consciousness to hide from the Family of Blood, who need the Doctor and not in a good way. The story is set one year before the Great War, which is World War I. Location, costumes and designs are fittingly picked for this type of scenario, and offer some great television. The storytelling about the type of warrior the Doctor is is very well told, giving us an insight into the Doctor's thoughts and beliefs. The suspense of where the story will go next leaves us very high up of Doctor Who episodes, and is one of the best told stories ever to screen. Martha is truly amazing, the spotlight is on her and watching her interact with a human version of the Doctor is very good. Watching her struggle with telling a stubborn human what to do to open the watch and release the Time Lord back into him. The love story on the side is not too much and does give us warmth to the story. The ending of the shots of a cemetery and the music alongside it is a nice touch to end the story, as we are told always to remember them, which carries a strong message to the viewer. It's almost the best, but not quite. One more story has to come out on top. I'm sorry. I am so, so sorry. I mean, you've got two shadows. It's how they hunt. They latch onto a food source and keep it fresh. In number one, Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead. This is one of the best written, acted and spooky episodes of Doctor Who. Two parts can often be drawn out, but there's no indication of the amount of plot we get and the way the story is told. The Doctor Donna ends up on a whole planet of a library, it's a big library. Early on we get a sense of unease that something is not quite right when no one could be found. It's supposed to be the biggest library in the universe, and there's no one. But it turns out everyone was stored on a computer to save from what is lurking in the shadows, the Vashta Narada. The Doctor and Donna are brilliant together and even crack a few jokes despite being stuck in a massive library where the shadows want to eat your flesh. The introduction of River Song, played by the fantastic Alex Kingston, is one of the best additions to the entire franchise of Doctor Who ever. And her story is so original and unique, hence why it's still so well loved. Seeing her interact and her story develop with other Doctors over time makes us appreciate this episode. And tons more, as is her introduction. But all the more sad when she meets her sad and heroic end. End for her, but only the beginning for us. Is this the best story of Doctor Who ever? I could not answer that because one rule, spoilers. So I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm sorry. I'm really very sorry. Are we good? Doctor, are we good? Okay, so that's our roundup of the best 10th Doctor episodes. What did you think? Do you agree with your list, or is there a certain episode you think ranks higher? Make sure to let us know via social media and the comment section below. In case you didn't know, Doctor Who will air in November 2023, with three special episodes as the show's 60th anniversary headliner event. David Tennant returns as the 14th Doctor alongside Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. Meanwhile, Shooty Gatwa's first episode of the 15th Doctor will air over the festive period, while his series 14 will debut in 2024 with Millie Gibson. Disney Plus is the exclusive home for new seasons of Doctor Who outside of the UK and Ireland. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at TARDIS Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. That's it from TARDIS Central, I've been Jack, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.